Right, in this video, we're looking at how to solve linear equations. I've listed a set of steps to do this in the upper right-hand corner here. The set of steps are basically summarized by this little phrase, Sam C. So you can think of a person's name, Sam, and then C is like a last initial. So Sam C will help you remember the steps that you need to do to solve linear equations. All right, so let's look at the first step here, simplifying. When you're asked to simplify an equation, what that means is to basically go through and distribute and combine like terms. The other thing you might do when simplifying an equation is you might want to eliminate fractions in the equation. So if the equation has a bunch of fractions or decimals and you want to get rid of those things, you can do that at this step as well. Step two here is the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality says basically that whatever you add to one side, you must add to the other side. Whatever you subtract from one side, you must subtract to the other side. So it basically adheres to the golden rule of algebra. Remember the golden rule of algebra says whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other side. All right, and then we'll apply the multiplication property of equality. The multiplication property of equality says that whatever you multiply on one side, you should multiply to the other side. And if you divide something on one side, you should divide the same thing on the other side. So again, it's following that golden rule of algebra, but it involves the operation of multiplication and division. And then lastly, we're going to want to check our answer, right? So once we have a solution, we should be able to plug it back into the equation and confirm that it is in fact correct. Some of the time checking will be optional, but there will be times when you actually have to check. So we'll cover that as we come to examples where checking is mandatory. There are some procedures we use to solve equations that sometimes introduce some erroneous solutions and those solutions then would have to be eliminated by the checking process. So occasionally you do have to check. I'd say most of the time it's optional. Okay, so let's try to solve this first example, example A, using this procedure. So when you look at the simplifying step, for example, A, and there really isn't anything to do. We don't have parentheses, so we don't have to distribute. And at least on the left side of the equation, I do not have like terms. And on the right side of the equation, I do not have like terms. So there's nothing I can do to combine those. So then we'll move to the second step, which is the addition property of equality. And to do that, we're basically going to say, you know, we want to get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other. So let's try to get the m's together on one side of the equation, and let's get the numbers on the other side of the equation together. So the general approach that people use is they would say, let's add the same thing to both sides of the equation in order to remove the 3m here. So if I look at this 3m here on the left, I'd say that 3m needs to move over to meet this 3m on the other side of the equation. Typically, people will say then you should add 3m to both sides. And the reason why you would want to add 3m is because this is a negative 3m. So we have to basically cancel it out so it becomes 0m. And in order to do that, we have to add its opposite, which would be a positive 3m. And then if we do that, you know, rewriting the equation, we would get the following result. 7 is equal to, this would cancel out, and then we'd have 6m plus 1. All right, and that's perfectly correct, and there's nothing wrong with doing the problem that way, but I'm gonna show you an alternative way to handle this addition property of equality. So we'll do that for the next example, or the next part. You see that we have this positive one here, that's near the 6m. Well, I don't want it near the 6m. That's no good for us. We want the variables isolated on one side of the equation. We want the numbers on the other side of the equation. So the ultimate goal is to get the variable alone on one side of the equation and everything else, the numbers on the other side of the equation. So in order to do that, we've got to get this plus one away from the 6m. And what we're going to do to do that, in this case, we could say, oh, subtract one from both sides. That's fine. But we could also do this. We can say, let's just pick up this positive one and we'll literally move it over here to the other side of the equation. There's a little rule that says when you cross this imaginary line that's here where the equal sign is, you change the sign. So try to remember that, it's a little poem, right? Cross the line, change the sign. And what that means is that you can pick up anything you want and move it to the other side of the equation. But when you do that, the consequence is that you change the sign of the number or the value that you're moving over. So a positive one on the other side of the equation will become a negative one, and that means we can cross out that positive one here. So we'll end up with the answer 7 minus 1 is equal to 6m. And 7 minus 1, of course, is 6, and that'll be equal to 6m. And then from here, we no longer have addition and subtraction in the problem, so it's time to move on to the next step of the process, 
which is going to be the multiplication property of equality. So to work with the multiplication property of equality, what we want to do again is to think about this goal. Our goal is to get the variable all alone on one side of the equation. So we have to sort of undo what's being done to the variable. So if you look at what's being done to the variable here, it's being multiplied by 6. So how do we undo that operation? We have to divide by 6 because the opposite of multiplication is division. Or in other words, the inverse of multiplication is division. Okay, so let's divide both sides by 6 and see what happens. If I divide this by 6, 6 by 6 is just 1, right? So dividing that will just give us 1m. So I'll rewrite my equation as just m or 1m. And then 6 over 6, of course, gives you 1 on the other side. So we end up with this answer that m is equal to 1. And we're done because we've basically isolated m on one side of the equation and we have the numerical answer on the other side. Now it would be time for us to check. All right, so let's take this m equals 1 answer and plug it back into our original equation where m is and see if it actually works. Well, on the left, we'd have 7 minus 3 times 1 is equal to 3 times 1 plus 1. All right, well, 7 minus 3 times 1 is just 7 minus 3. That will give you 4. Is that equal to 3 times 1 plus 1? I think so. They're both 4, so it checks. All right, let's look at the second equation here, equation B. So starting again with the process, we want to simplify first. Simplify means that we should do all the distribution and combining like terms that we can at the start of the problem. So anything with a parenthesis indicates that we can use the distribution property to remove the parentheses. So let's start by writing this as a negative 1, and we'll distribute it into the parentheses here. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to do 2 times y and 2 times 1 to remove the parentheses there. All right, so rewriting is going to give us 5, then minus 1 times positive 6y is negative 6y, and minus 1 times a positive 9 is going to give you a negative 9, and you'll bring down your plus 2y. It's very important that you're very careful about rewriting everything in the equation and only do one step at a time. Basically, you want to do one line per step. If you do that, you're going to be good and you're going to be fast. So it may seem counterintuitive that moving slowly is actually going to make you faster, but that's actually true. Just doing one step at a time is going to make you more smooth in the process, and being smooth is going to make you faster at the process. So 2 times y is 2y, and then finally 2 times 1 is going to give you positive 2. Okay, so there you have the distribution step done. Now we want to combine like terms. So on the left-hand side of the equation are the things that can go together. Well, I certainly can put variables together, and I can certainly put numbers together. So here I have a positive 5, and I have a negative 9. We're going to go ahead and call that then, what, negative 4. And then if you look at this, I have a negative 6y and a positive 2y. If I put those together, I'll get a negative 4y. That will be equal to... 2y plus 2. The right-hand side of the equation does not have like terms, so we cannot combine there. All right, let's go ahead and do the next step then. After simplifying, we should use the addition property of equality. So again, this is the step where we're able to move things across this imaginary line, right? We cross the line, we change the sign. Remember that? So we'd like to get the variables together on one side and get the numbers together on the other side. You can, if you want, for example, move this 2y over here. And when it gets over there, it'll become a negative 2y. So we would have negative 4 minus 4y minus 2y is equal to 2. So remember, we picked up the 2y and brought it over, so it becomes a negative 2y on the other side of the equation. So that will give us negative 4, and then we can combine like terms here. Negative 4y and negative 2y makes a total of negative 6y, and that'll be equal to 2 on the other side of the equation. Then if we want, we can pick up this negative 4 and bring it over to the other side of the equation here. And when it comes over there, it'll just become a plus 4, right? So we'll have negative 6y, is equal to 2 plus 4. And that, of course, will give you negative 6y is equal to 6. Now, from here, you'll notice there is no longer addition and subtraction in the equation. So at this point, we need to move to the multiplication property of equality. And we're going to ask, what's being done to y, right? So always ask yourself that question. What's being done to y, and how do I undo that, right? So it's 6 times y, right? Or negative 6 times y. So how do I get rid of the negative 6? I need to use the inverse operation, which in this case will be division. So I'll divide by negative 6. And when I do that, that cancels out. And we'll end up with the answer y is equal to 6 divided by negative 6, which is negative 1. So our answer becomes y equals to negative 1. Now at this point, we'd want to check our answer. 
All right, so let's plug negative one into our equation. So we'll have five minus six times negative one plus nine plus two times negative one, and that should be equal to two times negative one plus one. All right, we'll look at the right-hand side real quick. This negative one plus one is gonna give you zero, and two times zero should just give you zero. So we're expecting the other side of the equation to give us zero as well. So we'll have five minus, this will give you negative six. Six times negative one is negative six plus nine, and then minus two. So we'll have five minus, now negative six plus nine will give you positive three minus two, and then we have five with the negative three here because negative one times positive three is negative three and then minus two and then finally we'll end up having five take away three take away two which is also zero so we end up with the answer zero equals zero and that means the equation checks out